Rosalie. Hi, here is Patricia Barane. Together, we are Belle Passion. Today, I will show you how to create a beer cake as a 3D cake. And I will talk you through it. First, bake the cake dough and cut it then into thinner slices. Next, mix some jam with a bit of rum. Now, spread the jam mixture on each of the slices. I use pickled cherries for this cake instead of jam, but be careful not to use compote. You do not have to worry that the rum would smell too much, on the contrary, it will give the cake an interesting aroma which we know from gingerbread, for example. If you are going for more of a natural taste, spread a weak layer of butter onto each cake slice instead of the jam. After this step, proceed to spreading the cream. Without the jam or butter, we risk that the cake will suck in all the moisture from the cream and we will be left with only a dry cake, practically without any cream. Here, you can see the best chocolate cream called the Heavy Parisian Whipped Cream. This cream is not only ideal for 3D cakes, as it keeps its shape, it even tastes great. You can find the recipe in our other videos. When you are finished with covering each slice with the jam mixture and the chocolate cream, stack them on top of each other by sticking two covered sides on top of one another. Cover the reverse sides again with a thin layer of diluted jam and cream. When we have a cake that is high enough, we then start carving the desired shape. In our case, a cake. We conclusively find ourselves with two halves, which we then cover in cream and spread it out. When finished, cover the whole cake with cream and smoothen it out as well. If it seems to you that it might be uneven somewhere, or that you cut too much, you can easily add some leftover cake from the cutting before to it, and again, smoothen everything out with some cream. You can practically think of the cake as a sculpture from clay. The only thing with cake is that it often has to be cooled or even frozen. If you work on it for too long, it may start to collapse and melt. Finally, cover both halves of the cake with plastic wrap and let it freeze. Glue the frozen halves of the cake to each other with some cream and straighten it if it appears uneven by either cutting any excess cake or adding more to it. Use cream for anything you need to be glued together and smoothen up the whole cake. Push out a circle. This will be the cover of the cake. Finally, check if the top is horizontal. You might even use a bubble level. Freeze the cake again once it's perfectly aligned and all smoothened out. Refrigerating isn't enough. In this case, the whole cake may collapse and the whole shape is ruined. While your cake is being cooled, color and roll out your fondant. Color the white fondant using edible gel covers. For that, I will combine dark brown and chestnut brown for example. If you want an even better tone, you can even add a little red. First, we have to support the bottom of the cake. Use a plate to trace a circle and cut it out of fondant. You can leave out the step for smaller cakes. For bigger ones though, especially if you know that you will have to transport the cake somewhere or that it will stand in a room for a long time, using this as a support might be helpful. Take the cake out of the freezer and turn it upside down. Take off the tablet on top and spread some cream all over the cake. Then place your rolled out fondant on top and smoothen out any bubbles. Using this special cake spatula, it does come in very handy, apply more pressure to it and smoothen it out again. When you're happy with it, turn it upside down again. Of course, you must be careful not to let it fall. It will get quite heavy. Here you can see how important it becomes that we have left the cake sit in the freezer. If we wouldn't have done that, operating with the cake like this would have become quite impossible. 
it would have completely lost its shape. Only now will we cover the entire cake. Smear some water onto it using your fingers. It will function as glue and the fondant sheet will adhere to it perfectly. Roll out a new sheet of fondant and place it onto your cake. Though here lurks it another danger. Don't lift the sheet using only your hands. Your fingers might tear through it. Place it rather on a silicone sheet and use that to transfer the fondant. If you have a larger fondant sheet, you can also use a plastic tablecloth. Hold your fondant sheet as close as possible to your cake and then quickly flip it onto the cake so that the fondant covers the whole cake. Smoothen out any bubbles or wrinkles on this layer as well. The surface doesn't have to be perfect though, because we will be covering it with fondant planks. These we will create by rolling out the fondant once again, but this time we will use a structuring foil to imitate the structure of wood. You can achieve the same results with a knife as well. The foil is just way quicker and it makes it appear more realistic, more like actual wood. Cut the rolled out fondant into stripes and straighten the top and the bottom. Wet the surface of the cake and stick the planks on it. Keep che checking that the stripes are straight. Simply cut off any fondant that sticks out.
Now, we will create our metal fastenings. You can put your cake into the refrigerator. Just be careful with the humidity. Especially in the back, the cake will be more prone to melting. But you can easily prevent that by wrapping your cake in plastic foil. Make the fastenings out of four thin strips of fondant. Use your knuckles to make the fastening uneven, as if handmade by a smith. The upper strip should be a little wider than the one underneath. The metallic effect can be achieved two ways. You can either use a silver spray color or a color in powdered form. If you want to intensify the powdered silver color, mix it with high percentage alcohol. This is necessary in our case though. It is enough to just brush the powder onto the fastening. Turn the fastenings upside down. Apply some water and stick them to the cake. Cut off any parts that stand out. For the other metal parts, cut out two diamond-like shapes and place two small balls in the middle of each. Color them just as the previous fastenings. You can now practically say that we are finished with our keg. But it looks very new and not too realistic. For that old and rusty look, we can add some shade and make it a little dirty. Once more, we will use the powder color and add a drop of alcohol. Use a flat brush that can absorb a lot of powder and brush it onto the wood markings. These will come out better. Continue to color any cracks or wrinkles. This will make the wood structure look deeper than it is. Don't color whole surfaces. Try to concentrate on the places that you would, like, would imagine having shade as well. The cake in itself is finished. What we will be adding is a tap. And if you'd like, you can also make the decorative emblem and a hop twig.
we will make the tap. To start, get yourself a stick and wrap a confectionery wire of the size 20, that should be the biggest size, around it. These wires, which are normally used in confectionery art for making flowers, are exceptional to normal wires because they have paper wrapped around them, meaning the fondant doesn't slip. Wrap it around the stick and create a loophole at the top. At the bottom, bend the ends together to make them sit tightly. Tighten the wires properly, the wire shouldn't fall or slip off. Stamp the stick with the wire into the rolled out fondant so that you know the exact size. Cut out the shape of the handle around it. Using a round cookie cutter, cut out the middle part. Do this twice and stick both parts to the wire loophole using some water. Now wrap the fondant rectangles around the stick and mold the tap. Finally, we have to mold the tap covering. Make a ball out of fondant, flatten it, and stick it onto the tap. Stick the whole tap into a polystyrene box and let it dry. Spray some edible gold coloring on it.
and add some shade using brown powdered color. This will make it look older or more vintage. We're coming to the end. Let's make the crest. We found the picture of this crest on a historic house. We printed it on the 300 gram wafer paper. If you don't have the chance to print it on edible paper with edible colors, we can do it for you. We will print it out and send it to you in a hard paper envelope. We can print anything you want. Just upload your image on our website. Wafer paper can be cut easily, practically just as normal paper. You just have to be a little more careful for it not to crack, and you shouldn't touch it with wet hands, otherwise the colors will dissolve. We can just as well print on fondant sheets, which are more supple and thicker. Now, let's make edible glue. Just mix an egg white with powdered sugar. We will use this to stick the tap and the edible picture onto the cake. If you want the colors on the picture to stand out more, you can paint it with this gel called Modicor Gel. This goes only for wafer paper. Don't paint the fondant sheets. The colors on it would dissolve. Hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of work. And that's why we'd both be very happy if you would like click subscribe. If you already done that, you can still like the video or write a comment beneath. You can also follow us on Instagram or Facebook. Make sure to check out all the links under the video that we have prepared for you. We say goodbye. Hopefully not for long. Rosalie and Patricia.